Blast me to Bermuda. It's time for the Mad Merlin's review of Hornby TT120. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Mad Merlin's video. I'm Merlin and I'm here to talk to you about my thoughts on the new Hornby TT120 scale. So, before we get started, don't forget to, of course, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and tickle the little bell just so he knows you want to hear about my future mad content. So, as I um, alluded to in my Christmas video, um, I have a secret secret uh, project for, for this year. And that is my return to model railways. My modeling career began in a much smaller scale than Warhammer. Um, my love for models started, of course, with model railways. As a young boy, I enjoyed playing with the Thomas the Tank toys. And eventually I got myself a massive eight by six foot table made up for my 12th birthday and I had about three or four different trains running on it. I had a good mixture of diesels, electrics and steam but steam has always been my preferred choice of um, power for locomotives. I think there's just something special and majestic about them really that sets them apart from modern day stuff. So with that said, a little bit of history, um, my future plans is to create a brand new layout from scratch. I've designed, been designing layouts for quite some time now. Um, sadly, due to the ever decreasing space in the world, we are now limited a bit more on what we can do. So we can't make a very good double O layout on say a three by four board. So that's where TT120 comes in. I know I'm probably late to the party covering this as there's a lot of other people who have covered this before me, but it's a nice new scale that sits part way between N gauge, which is for me, a little tiny and fiddly. Um, so yeah, definitely don't think my uh, fat fingers would be suitable for N-Gage. But it's also a lot smaller and space conscious than double O. So um, a little bit of history about TT120. It has been done before. We'll see that in the magazine here. But um, it's basically a more true scale from what I've heard on a lot of videos. So it fits in a lot better for the scale of people to carriages and of course to rolling stock and road vehicles and scenic materials, of course, is for any scale near enough. So with that in mind, I've already ordered my train set and I've been looking at... Um, a few buildings on Pico's um, TT120 line, excuse me, which is a little on the small side at the moment, but they are, like Hornby, fairly new to the game. So I'm thinking that I'm going to be using a mixture of scratch built, Pico, and Hornby stuff for my future projects. But this is, of course, a review, so let's cover what we've come here to. Uh, talk around. So Hornby released TT120 uh, back in I think October last year and they've started up the club which were, is free still until the end of January so as part of the club you get a badge holder and club membership card so expires 10th of the 10th 23 course holding this gives you free entry to um, the Hornby um, factory and tour up at Margate 
You also get a beautiful TT120 Club lanyard and a beautifully embossed uh, Hornby TT Club pin badge. I've, thanks to Warhammer, I've been getting more and more into pin badge collecting lately, and I think it's really quite nice. Nice glossy colouring, really clear. I'll be very proud to display that. So we also got a welcome letter which details a bit more. So we are pleased to welcome you to the TT120 Club, which is dedicated to enthusiasts throughout the world. Club member, you get these benefits. A quarterly magazine featuring the latest news and product updates, membership card, lanyard and badge holder, a pin badge and 15% off your orders at Hornby TT120. So that's a pretty good bonus there if you are if you sign up for the club member. And of course you get um, all the other welcome at the bottom there. So what we'll do, we'll go through issue one of the TT magazine. We'll have a look at some of the other TT products Hornby have for their first year or so. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on things. So with that said, let's take a look at TT120 issue one, autumn 2022. So here we have our magazine and we got the star of the show at the front there, the TT120, the Scotsman train set locomotive there. So, Small World Big Ideas is the catchphrase for this particular line. In the opening page, we've got a little bit of information about how TT came to be, what their plans are for the future, and pretty much outlining the whole TT range there. So we've got a contents list of everything in this issue. So we've got some nice stuff to go through. So first off, we've got a Why Choose one TT120. So for those of you who don't know, TT stands for tabletop and 120 stands for the gauge. So 12 millimeter gauge, uh, gauge track, scaled of two to 2.54 millimeters a foot. So obviously one in 120. So this is what our track will look like. So N is really thin there, only nine millimeters. 12 millimeters of TT, 16.5 for double O, and 32 there for your O gauge, which is uh, the size of your garden layouts and such. So it sits nicely there, and there we have a scale picture of a A3 there. So we got the Blink Bonnie loco there in double O gauge and an N gauge there but sitting nicely in the middle there at TT120. So why choose it? It's obviously a nice space saving um, scale so we can set it up easily in the garage, in the shed, living room, in your attic, or pretty much anywhere that you've got a bit of space, even the windowsill will be useful. Got a couple of suggested layouts here. So we've got a L-shaped layout with a fiddle, fiddle yard behind. So this just shows a small country halt with goods yard, engine shed, and a tunnel going forth into the outer world. A little bit more detailed layout here, which is kind of what I'm possibly thinking towards. I'm getting a lot of ideas about similar looks and bits that I want to include on my layout. But we've got here the station building itself with a downline and an upline. Got a small um, fiddle yard for coaches there. We've got the fiddle yard there for your various different trains that you want to run. Got some nice uh, scenic elements here. We've got cuttings with a viaduct and a smaller bridge there. Tunnel entrances going in and out of the fiddle yard. Small little farm and town. And uh, yeah, some really nice um, scenic elements, as I said. Plenty of roads over and under bridges, footpaths, and the like. So here we have a nice little um, garage conversion, which works perfectly well. Wood helps and acts as an insulator, so perfect to help set up your model railways. 
So if next up we got an introduction to phase one of the TT range. So we got a few of their um, plank box wagons here. These are, I'm guessing, unpainted versions, but still look pretty cool. So this is the set I've started with, the Easterner. Main reason I've picked it is I've never had an A4, so I decided to go for that. Uh, so I've had an A3 before with Flying Scotsman, and an A4 has been on my to-get list for quite some time. I do love the sleeker look of them. But moving on, we got a small breakdown of the locomotives that we'll be seeing in the first range um, wave. Building and accessories, so they are doing their standard um, track packs. So these are progressive steps that you eventually build out from the train set into a larger layout. Again, there'll be more of that later. And we've got some beautiful buildings here done in their resin from Scaledale. Looking quite nice, based a lot on the Settle and Carlisle um, Railway up in Scotland. So not suitable for my needs, I'm looking for something a little bit more GWR. So yeah, here we have some examples of the coaches. So we've got some Pullmans, we've got some brakes in BR Crimson. And various different wagons, we've got some plank wagons, vent vans. Tankers and of course a brake van there. And of course Hornby are doing a tie-in with Oxford Diecast and do who do wonderful TT scaled um, vehicles. So here we have a nice beautiful GWR um, cabbed truck. That look quite nice on any little layout. And here we have a little bit of a close-up on the couplings, and they're universal couplings. So if you have TT stuff from America or Germany or anywhere else that particularly already has a TT range, you can hitch up to all your Hornby vehicles and locos. A little competition there to win our, a set of the Scotsman. Next, we have a interview with the um, key developer of the actual TT line. So Simon, who is mad on the TT scale, um, he's brilliant. He's dedicated to bringing this scale. It's been in the pipeline for quite some time. We got Prad here, who's one of the designers on the Hornby digital team. So yeah, lovely little interview. Chop, chops between each of them and yeah, really gives you a little bit of insight. A bit of advertisement there for uh, magazine Trackside. Then we got a little bit of history about Gresley's Pacifics. So the A1, A3 and of course the A4s. Most famous of all the A3s is Flying Scotsman and for the A4s we got Mallard. So this goes through the designing process, a bit of um, history about the locomotives in general. And yeah goes into covering all of their um, record-breaking attempts, etc. They have Quicksilver, one of the other A4s that's fairly well known, pulling the Silver Jubilee for the King, from King's Cross. So yeah, more and more background information on these wonderful um, locomotives. One of my um, oldest photos I've had since I was young was a beautiful painting of um, Sir Nigel Gresley, the A4. Um, I've had that on my bedroom wall ever since I was a kid, and it's still there now to this day. And we have a lovely shot there of a lot of the different A4s there themselves. Right, so moving on, we have phase two of the TT120 range, so we're looking at the future now at what's going to happen. So it's got coverage here of the HST power cars that's going to be uh, re released in future waves. Talks about GWR stuff, about your DCC fittings. So many other different types of locos that are going to be coming out as well. 
So the first um, GWR that's going to be coming out is a Castle Class locomotive, which is yet again another locomotive I've been meaning to pick up for quite some time, but I've never found the space or um, time to actually time and finance to actually pick one up. So I'll be picking up one of those as soon as it comes out in the new, uh, next stage of the releases. We've got some plenty of new wagons. We've got some steel wagons here more different tankers so and some hopper wagons as well so i'm definitely going to be picking up a nice variety of locomotives and rolling stock for my layout really hoping for a 14 double x class at some point so yeah now we're going to go back to history side of things so this is focusing on the original tt120 from back in the 50s so Rolling off the success of Double O, Triang did, of course, try to do their own smaller scale. And they released the TT120 sort of scale back then. Yeah, it's pretty basic, nicely detailed still, though, for the size. And yeah, it's it did a pretty good job back in the day. Never actually owned one myself, but it is a really good um uh track system Ugh, can't get my words out today for some reason here we have a nice little scale between tt and double o there so of course it was a lot smaller you could easily set it up and they had the uh set track system i believe where you could easily plug the tracks together to make your layouts quickly and a good variety of different locomotives and rolling stock as well so a lot of it is in this BR green, which is pretty nice. A little diesel rail car, a couple larger steam locomotives and a diesel. And yeah, just more and more background information. So they really went out and um, dedicated a lot to this. They did buildings, station packs, turntables, all sorts, really good. Moving on then, so we got getting started. So this is a nice little handy um, article focusing on building a layout for yourself. So first off, you want to try and design the layout. You can use the Hornby Track Pack Symbol Set, which is still available, and you can pretty much use it to represent the um, TT120 track, because most of it is um scaled radius wise slightly down from the double o so you can still use these as a good idea of creating a design once that's design done you want to think about your baseboard so we've got a nice baseboard here with plenty of supports to avoid against future warping then it's all about laying down your track planning out where it's going to go paint your baseboard and varnish it as well Then we want here, we have our track radii. So starting with first, all the way up to the fourth radius. Uh, talks about how to uh, put in your track pins. Testing your layout, of course, putting your buildings down, seeing that you've got enough clearance for coaches and trains. And then once you have done, stick them down with some PVA glue. And then we see we've got Bits of wood there to build an extension for the platform. So that's pretty cool. I think I'll be creating my own platforms to um, go with a lot of my buildings, but we'll see how things go for the future. And so here we have one of the, the final article. It's phase three and four. So we got a lot of the larger locos, so Evening Star, there's our first um, Great Western Castle class, which I'm definitely going to be picking up, Tinta Tintagel Castle. So yeah, not till phase three and four for this guy, I'm afraid. So I've got quite a while to wait, but it means I've got plenty of time to plan and save. So we've got some big diesels coming, some slightly more modern buildings in the form of a petrol station there. And then here we have the track plan. So your starter oval, 
And most of your train sets come with track pack one, which is the additional siding with some extra straights to extend the oval. Pack two adds your half inside curve there. Pack three finishes your inside curve and gives you a total of two sidings. And then pack four extends one siding into another double siding. And finally, pack five adds an inside siding there just for extra uh, storage. I believe for the actual track back itself, the design is you got station stations and you got like a little good siding here, engine shed, good shed. Yeah, really nice lay uh, layout. Pretty good for a double loop. So with that done, let's have a look through the actual catalog itself. So you can download this from the Hornby website if you want. But if you sign up to the club, you do get one sent to you. Uh, also on the TT120 website, you can download the track mat, which is the only way I believe you can get the track mat. I've seen quite a few reviews of the Scotsman train set and none of them have actually included a track mat. So if you want to build up the track mat, you might need to download it to yourself. Personally, I'm going to be doing my own design, so it's not much of a bother for me. I've got plenty of old track mats still lying around anyway from older train sets. So first off, we've got a nice welcome introduction and we have a picture here showing the full layout that the track packs build up to. So like I said, we've got a double engine shed there, good shed there, single station, double station here, some more good siding there. And really, a really nice layout here. We, we've got a small little uh, central country area here with a pond, bus routes, farm animals there in the field, little fire engine on the country roads leading out to the towns. Really good, nice little layout. So, for somebody getting into it, it's great. But for me, I've been in the hobby quite a while, so I'm definitely going to be doing my own thing as I said. Again we got that picture of the scale difference so the actual size of our double O's are there, the ends are there so the TT120 sits nicely in the middle and yeah I think it is pretty good scale. It's definitely going to be less um, delicate than the end gauge but not as durable as double O. So Again, people like me with fat fingers, you are still going to have to be careful, but you don't have to worry too much. It's a lot easier to see, especially if you put in the train and wrong stop on the track. So, first up we have train sets. The Scotsman train set came out and started shipping, I believe, just before Christmas. So most people are getting theirs now. The Easterner, I believe, is getting set out end of this month January so I should be getting mine soon I'll be doing a unboxing and review of that once I get it so what it does show here the track pat track mat um it isn't actually included in the train set but you do get your starter oval track pack a a revealer controller buffers and of course your choice of your locomotives so the Scotsman comes with Blink Bonnie 2550 LNER with three Pullman coaches. You got Cecilia, Gloria, and Brake Car number six. Easterner is the one I've picked up. So it comes with William Whitelaw, the A4, two Mark I composite coaches, and a Mark I brake coach there. Future train sets are going to be a British Pullman train set, LNER East Coast Mainline, and a Mainline Express one as well. So we'll be seeing some um, high-speed locomotives coming soon to the train sets. It'll be quite nice for those of you into the modern day era. So the first wave of locomotives are much um, following suit from the train sets as they most usually most likely use the same tooling and mold designs. So we've got Fine Scotsman, Nighthawk, Trigo, Silver King, we've got Falcon, Mallard, 
We've got the coronation classes here, so Duchess of Athol and Duchess of Montrose. And finally, Duchess of Abaton. Abercorn, even. I can't read, even with my glasses on. So the shape of things to come. So we've got the nine Fs here. So we've got Evening Star. We've also got another 9F, 92166, and 92212 there as well. So plenty for those who enjoy the lovely big express locomotives. Personally for me, I'm really looking forward to the um, cast class locomotives. I'm thinking Spitfire might be one of my favourites, or one of the castles themselves actually. So yeah, plenty of stuff to come for the future. So we also see we've got Pannier tanks coming as well with class 5700, so I'm definitely going to be picking up one of those. We've got Britannia class and the BR Black 5s as well as the J94s. And of course, all of these will be DCC ready. I believe only one of the sets is... Um, And both are only DCC ready, so no, nothing is DCC fitted, so it's all ready for you to add your own stuff, which I'm still learning about DCC, so it's not going to be um, relevant to me at the moment, but eventually I will go down the road of having that digital command control circuits. Moving on, we've got some Class 8 diesel shunters here. A big class 50 Coco, the Leviathan there. So even to our diesel and electrics. Got some more class 50 locomotives here, class 66s as well. So as I said, I'm not really the biggest fan of diesel or electric, but as I do have a fondness for the um, era around the end of steam and the introduction of diesel, I might be including um, perhaps a 08. I might even repaint it, which should be something I'm good at, as you know from the channel. I'm good at my painting. So just take the chassis off, give it a nice little repaint. If they bring out a generic black or even a GR sort of coloured ones, maybe a blue, well, we've got the BR, BR bluish one there, that'd be a quite nice one. But yeah. Moving on, we've got our high speed locomotives. So we've got the classic blue and yellow and white uh, intercity there. We've also got the more um, well known black, white, yellow, and red intercity there. Which, growing up, I've always wanted one of those. So maybe I might pick one up. I think I did have a HST um, a few years back, but I sold it straight on again, really. I never was, like I said, a big fan of HST stuff. Um... And yeah, I did have one, but the front lights didn't work, so I ended up, I think, taking it back? I can't quite remember how, actually. It was quite some time ago it happened. But anyway, moving on, we've got some more diesel electrics coming in phases three and four. So we got the 31 classes there, 37s, rail freight class 60s, class 47s. So yeah. And plenty more to come, of course, as well. BR Class 67s, the Hitachi Class 800s, and the Class 73s. Moving on to coaches and wagons. We've got the Pullman cars that are coming out. We've also got the LMS Crimson cars to go with the ones in your train sets. So we've got Claudia again here. we got Octavia slash Plato slash Zenobia. So we've got three different ones that will be um, available there. They are, all the Pullman cars have working table lamps, except the ones, I believe, in the um, start, starter set itself. We then got brake car 65 there. So we've got all the different um, LMS 
and BR coaches there. So definitely picking up maybe a few extra just to add to my train. Got some of the BR maroon and cream there. Then we got a lot of uh, intercity ones, so the classic blue and white, and the red and black there, and white. So more of the crimson and cream ones, which have always been my one of my favourite of the um, colorations for the carriages. Of course, being BR uh, GWR, I uh, of course like the um, chocolate and cream, although these are more coffee and cream. Of the Pullman, yeah, BR1 GWR ones. I keep saying BR for some reason. GWR, GWR ones are slightly similar, it's um, a little less cream and a little bit more chocolate, and it's a darker brown to the um, nice coffee color of the Pullman coaches. There, more in the way of uh, HST cars, so you can make your trains as long or as short as you want. I'm used to pretty long ones going through from Exeter all the way up to Bristol. So, and then we got some rolling stock. So some of the first stuff I'm going to pick up is a few of these plank wagons and box vans because while they are BR and NER, they can pretty much be used as any era really in any lo location. Just a little repaint, renumbering. Same for the brake vans. Mineral wagons here, we've got some hoppers and tankers, so I'll pick up a few of these just to give my um, layout a bit of a goods traffic theme. Then we're moving on to all our tracks, so we've got a power track which comes with your train sets, you've got an uncoupling ramp, you've got your crossings, your points, you've got your small curves, half curves, double curves, Half straights, small straights, medium straights, and even double straights. There's additional power clips you can get, re-railers. Coming in phase two and three, we've got wide points, long straights. So that's where your long straights are. We've only got the double straight at the moment. Second and third radius curves, quarter curves. So we'll have lots more track coming out in the future as well. And of course, the track system that Hornby is well known for. I've always loved their track pack systems and the layouts that they've done. It's really good, especially for people young getting into the hobby and want something basic to get them going. It's a really good way to um, build it the layout over time and, you know, expand your skills. I think the only one I've successfully built up was the um, 3x4 Thomas and Friends mini mat that they did, which had a single siding into a station. It had double siding, I think, into an engine shed. I made it a double siding on the inside, added a small siding here for a single locomotive. And yeah, I generally enjoyed my little, that little train set. I had it on a board that I pulled out from underneath my bed. I believe I sold that one about three years ago now. I still have my um, 6x4 one, which never got finished. But that Thomas one did get pretty worked on. Got a street plan down for it. I had a load of buildings to use on it. It was the closest thing I had to a complete railway. Fully detailed as well, nice scenic elements added to it. But I'm definitely going to be going a little bit more hardcore with adding all the detail. I'm going to be doing some raised areas, low, de low areas, etc. Yeah, I'm going to have real good fun when it comes to doing my own layout. And finally, if we have all the buildings. So again, these are the S and C um, style buildings which is going to be the first range of buildings. After that, we're going to be getting some different ones later on. Of course, Oxford Diecast are doing their um, TT120 scaled vehicles. So we've got an Austin low loader there. We've got a cab, fire engine, buses, and various different railway support vehicles there. 
And we've got some of the stuff coming in the future. So we've got a nice pub, which will look quite nice. Petrol station there, a slightly modern bungalow, and a lovely church as well. And finally, before the end of the magazine, we've got Hornby's um, Scale Scenics Range. So this is, yeah, it's the Hornby Scenics Range that we got from Double O. Scenics works for any scale, luckily. So you can get away with buying a big pack of trees. That'll work for any scale, because nature is nature. So luckily I have a lot of scenic material left over from old railway projects and plenty of Warhammer projects. Um, I'm still working on my Hoff game board, so some of that scenic material will be um, eaten up on that. But yeah, you've got a nice selection here of tree, different types of trees you can get. Um, so you've got your basics, your hobby trees, which can be used for anything from wargaming to model railways, etc. And you've got some more professional looking trees trying to catch the realism of it, the trees themselves. Got your ballast for so putting under your track, scatter, your flock, static grass, your lichens for adding your bushes and foliage, and some extra foliage scatter materials there. They also do their um, grass glue, a static grass puffer bottle, and we got the scale rock there as well. And finally, we got a little bit about the club membership there. So, as I said earlier, it is free to sign up until the end of January. Then it's £30 for the whole year, which isn't really that much. So we'll get special bundles and deals sent to us. We also get 32-page magazine, which you just re uh, read through. We get the membership card, the pin badge, the lanyard, and of course the card holder. We get club models, which at the moment we're not getting one, but they're promising that they will be part of the future release. So can't wait to see what we get for that. We get advance notice of any releases that aren't in the catalogue or on the website, so that's pretty cool. Free access to the Hornby Visitor Centre, half price tickets uh, for the, uh, for maximum of four people to the Hornby Visitor Centre. Exclusive club members areas on the website. Free access to the members lounge or selected Hornby exhibitions or model railway exhibitions in general. Monthly email updates and of course free competition entry into the annual Best Hornby TT layout. So that'd be quite cool. Hopefully I will have something done ready for that when it comes around. But yeah, all the general stuff that you get for being a member of any of the Hornby um, clubs. I still have a lot of my club magazines from when I signed up to the club many years ago. I started on issue three, believe it or not. And I collected every issue up until must be 10 years ago now. Yeah, must be about that. But anyway, here we have the end of our catalogue. So let's bring everything back in. We've got our welcome letter, our magazine, and of course our pin badge here. So there we have it. That is the first pieces of TT120 that have been handed out to people and really it is a good starting place for anyone looking to get into the model railway hobby. Especially now with things getting a little bit more restricted on space, layouts that you can easily put in a windowsill with a simple running backwards or forward shunting design would be pretty ideal for people. Um, like me, I'll be having my um, boards on tables, so I might even plan one to go around a bedroom or in the corner of a bedroom or even under a bed. There is many opportunities for this in the future. So, really good start to a brand new scale. Um, this course isn't for everybody. If you've already dedicated yourself to one of the other scales, yeah, sure, you can stick to your scale. And this is really just another scale and another option for other hobbyists. But if, like me, you are kind of limited on space, 
you want something that you can set up quickly and put away quite simply without the need of fully disassembling it. So yeah, building a layout that can be slid under your bed or pulled out from behind a cupboard, laid on the floor, played with, and then put back again, is really a good handy um, storage solution and way to run your models. Of course, you will have to find a storage space for all your, your locos, rolling stock vehicles, and your um, scenic elements. Um, under the, putting your stuff under your bed isn't too bad. You can leave everything glued down. Other solutions like hiding it, uh, sliding it in behind the cupboard or something, you're going to have to make sure you take everything off. So you want to think about um, just drilling a little hole into the baseboard and placing each tree in that hole. And buildings, you want to make sure you keep your boxes for them if you're using the resin buildings. So they do get damaged quite easily. But yeah. A storage stack box would be ideal for storing a lot of your loose, mater loose um, material bits. So I think this is going to be a great um, range that Hornby have done. Like I said, I've actually looked at the Pico buildings as they're already releasing... Because Pico is more of a southwest area company, they're releasing stuff that's GWR anyway. So they got a nice GWR station, good shed, and a signal box coming already out, which are laser cut um, wood kits. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing it. They also have plastic um, platform kits that you can build and shape to your own liking, which is pretty cool. But that is specific, specifically scaled to the Pico track, which is a little bit taller than the Hornby track. There is um a what's the word connector where you can get um slight rays from the hornby track into the pico track so if you are mixing from pico and hornby there is of course that way that you can mix and match your trains and have them running on both tracks styles um so yeah Stay tuned for future um, news on this. I am currently going through my old railway plans and trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, like I said, a lot of it is going to be depending where I eventually find the space to store it. I do have my hobby room, but that is kind of dedicated at the moment to my gaming table. So I'm thinking I might have to have one of my... Um, one of the other spare rooms where there's not a lot of space left in it. So I'll find somewhere. But there is, of course, the good old fashioned under the bed method, which I might well be instituting in this case. And I think that has gone along enough, nearly three quarters of an hour of me blabbering about trains. So something new for the channel. All that's left to do is say Happy New Year, which I probably should have opened with, really. But hello and welcome back to the Mad Merlin's um, channel for 2023. Stay tuned. There is going to be plenty of updates on all my various projects coming soon. Imperium Journey will be uploaded um, shortly after this video. And I am in the process of finishing off some painting ready for actually playing the games from Imperium, then I've got the next four issues to work through, so plenty of content coming for that. I am also working on Star Wars Legion Get Started. Ooh, Ooh excuse me, getting tired. It shows my voice bores even myself. <laughs> but anyway, yes, plenty of content coming as I was yawning earlier. Um, Star Wars Legion is going to be my focus for Get Started this year. The new rulebook is out later this month, I believe, so I'm picking that up, giving that a read-through, then I can put into practice my uh, how I'm going to use a core set. I've already made a few plans, which I've shared on my social medias. Check them out in the link below. 
but a lot of it is going to be wait and see but either way i'm going to be enjoying doing that series building the core set it's classic civil war core set not the clone wars one but if you have the clone wars one feel free to have, follow along i will try to do pink videos for all the different factions i'll just need to pick up some random models at some point to help do that but as it is i'll be doing the rebels and the galactic empire so stay tuned for all that in the future of this year but like i said i've rabbited on long enough so thank you all for watching be sure to of course like comment share oh that's a point comment your favorite locomotive yeah there we go uh, like share and subscribe if you don't already do so and i will see you next time for more mad content goodbye <laughs>